welcome once again to our discussion of econometrics and today we are going to discuss about a specific type of econometric model which is also very interesting and which has very uh, interesting applications also many a times we we get that type of situation where these models what we are going to discuss from today onwards these uh, three four models are going to be extremely useful first of all the name of this class of models uh, they are known as qualitative response model qualitative response model Okay, or uh, or sometimes they are also known as uh, dummy dependent. Sorry, dummy dependent variable. model or sometimes they are known as uh, binary binary response model all are same binary response model. Now, why this is called qualitative response or binary response model? Because the dependent variable, the other name of the dependent variable is response, right? So, let us say that y i equals to alpha plus beta x i plus u i. Now, in the context of dummy variable, what we discussed sometimes our independent variables this x i may become qualitative in nature and we were discussing about uh, gender, caste, PhD, non-PhD, so on and so forth about this x i independent variable. So, when independent variable is qualitative in nature, we said that we have to convert this qualitative information into a quantitative one using the dummy variable approach. Now, the same dummy variable we can apply in this context also when your dependent variable is qualitative in nature. Okay? That is why the name called dummy dependent variable model, qualitative response model or binary response model. Why it is called binary response model? Because your response variable y i will take two values, right? we take two values. I will give you some example, right? let us give some example. Example number 1, let us say that our research question is why do some individual, why do some individuals some individuals own their own their car while others prefer public transport, prefer public transport. So, you are going to explain the factors, factors that can explain the car ownership right car ownership. So, when you go to individuals you will ask do you own a car they will say either yes or no right. So, this is a qualitative information. So, that yes or no information you have to translate into a quantitative format by assigning let us say 1 for yes and 0 for no. So, that means why equals to 1 indicates the ith individual is having a car, y equals to 0 indicates the household does not have a car, right. 
Example number two, why do some individuals, some individuals own their house house while others prefer to stay at rented apartment. This is another question. Right. This is another question that you might be interested. Example number three, suppose several individuals have applied for loan. Some of the individuals loan got approved and some individuals loan got rejected and we want to know what are the factors that can determine whether an individual's loan will ap get approved or not. Right. So, then basically you will ask the individuals whether your loan got approved, they will say either yes or no and you have to assign 1 for yes, 0 for no. That means again you are converting that quantitative information, qualitative information into quantitative one using the dummy variable. But in all these cases, in all these cases the qualitative information is only for the dependent variable and that you have to regress with what is the, house, what is the collateral that household is having what is the monthly income that the household is having, what is the dependency ratio, what is the education, sex, gender, so on and so forth. With all these factors, you are going to explain whether the individual, what is uh, individual's loan will get approved or not, right. So, basically whether here the research question is whether the individual's individual's loan got approved or not? This is the question. All right. So, here that means what I am saying that your y i, y i they can take only two value y i equals to 1 if having a car, let us say that this is the car owner, uh, ownership problem, if having a car, zero otherwise, otherwise, right. Now, let us also assume that probability, probability y i equals to 1 is denoted as p i and probability y i equals to 0 that is denoted as 1 minus p i, right, 1 minus p i, okay. Let us say this is, this is equation 1, this is 2, this is 3, right, this is 3. Now, if I take expectation of equation 1, then what I can write expectation of y i given x i equals to alpha plus beta x i. Let us say that is equation 4, right. Now, I can find the expectation of y i from this formula also because y i can take two values 1 and 0 and the probability that y will take value 1 is p i and 0 as 1 minus p i, right. So, this is 0 and 1, these are the values that y can take and the probability is p i and 1 minus p i, 1 minus p i. So, these are the two values y can take. So, expectation of y i from here what I can write expectation of y i equals to sorry this is 1 this is 0 
okay this is 0. So, p i into 1 plus 1 minus p i into 0 equals to p i. Let us say this is equation 5. Right, this is equation 5. Now, combining 4 and 5, combining 4 and 5, 4 and 5 if I combine, then what I can write that p i actually expectation of y i given x i equals to p i and that again equals to alpha plus beta x i. So, that means this implies p i equals to alpha plus beta x i, right. This is let us say equation 6, equation 6. Now, why this model, this model what I have, this is a probabilistic model that we have derived. So, that means when I am saying expectation of y i given x i equals to p i equals to alpha plus beta x i. This model is known as linear probability model, linear probability model. linear probability model. So, that is the first model in this class of models that means linear probability model is the first kind of model of the binary response models. Okay? We have many other models, but this is the starting point p i equals to alpha plus beta x i. Now, this is called linear probability model. Why this is called linear probability model? That means, this is in short I will say LPM. And why this is called LPM? Why LPM? Why this is called LPM? There are two reasons. First of all, first of all, unlike other cases, here expectation of yi given xi, xi denotes actually that means or conditional probability conditional probability of sorry conditional mean conditional mean of y i basically indicates indicates probability of owning a car. So, here the conditional mean of y i expectation of y i given x i they actually indicates a probability. When we are talking about y i equals to alpha plus beta x i plus u e i in the context of consumption function, there, their expectation of y i given x i or alpha plus beta x i was denoting the only the mean income, but here it is a conditional probab, it is a, it is a probability, conditional mean of y i indicates probability of owning a car and secondly, secondly that probability is a linear function of x that probability is linear in x. Because of these two reasons, this model is called linear probability model that is all right, linear probability model. Now, this linear probability model it has, though it is the starting point of this quantitative response model, it has some limitations. What are those? 
what are the limitations of limitations of LPM can you think of what are the limitations of LPM limitations of LPM the first one is as you know from the properties of probability that PI should always lie between 0 and 1 right PI should always lie between 0 and 1 but that implies expectation of yi expectation of yi given xi given xi should also lie between 0 and 1 and that implies that sorry and that implies that alpha plus beta xi should lie between 0 and 1 okay but as you can see suppose this xi denotes income that means we are trying to understand the probability that a particular household will own a car from that household's income right since this is a linear function as income increases probability will probability of owning a car will also increase but as you can think of, let us say income is increasing from 40,000 to 50,000, there would be some increase in the probability. Then again 50,000 to 75,000, another increase in the probability of owning a car. Then 75,000 to 1 lakh, 1 lakh to 1.5 lakhs, 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs, 2 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs. So the probability of owning a car will keep on increasing as x increases since it is a linear probability. So it may so happen that at some point of time your probability will go beyond 1 since you are calculating probability with a linear function. So that is why there is no guarantee that this pi or expectation of yi given xi will always lie between 0 and 1. Okay? But, but there is there is no guarantee no guarantee that that pi or expectation of yi given alpha plus beta xi they will lie between 0 and 1 and if that is the case that means you are actually violating the properties of probability so you may it may so happen that your estimated probability is 1.56 which does not make any sense which does not make any sense so that is the limitation of linear probability model okay limitation of linear probability model right and then secondly can we estimate the model pi equals to alpha plus beta xi using using uh, ols can we estimate the model right when i am saying that the expectation of yi given xi expectation of yi given xi equals to alpha plus beta xi can we estimate the model using OLS. What will happen if we estimate the model using OLS? Right? Okay. So, can we estimate estimate LPM using OLS? Using OLS that is also we need to think about okay now expectation of yi that means the model what you are estimating yi equals to alpha plus beta xi plus ui and y will take only 1 and 0 so that means depending so from here we can say that ui equals to yi 
minus alpha minus beta x i. So, equals to either 1 minus alpha minus beta x i or equals to minus alpha minus beta x i when y i equals to 1 when y i equals to 0. Right? So, that means here you see u i can take only two value, what would be the distribution of then u i? So, u i that means this will say that distribution, distribution of u i will be, will be discrete, discrete. instead of normal. Now, if I if u i follows a discrete distribution, we cannot go for hypothesis testing as you know, because for that we need the normality assumption of u i. Otherwise, we cannot construct the test statistic for conducting hypothesis testing. So, this is another problem of linear program of li linear probability model that First of all, uh, there is no guarantee that this will lie between 0 and 1, the probability. Then secondly, we cannot estimate this model using OLS method because u i takes only two values depending on what y takes. When y equals to 1, u i equals to 1 minus alpha minus beta x i and equals to minus alpha minus beta x i when y i equals to 0. So, what u i follows a discrete distribution, right. So, this is the this is the problem, right. This is the problem and to overcome, to overcome this econometrician, they developed another model which is called logit model, logit model. So, here instead of assuming probability is a linear function of x, what this model assumes that probability p i, which is actually probability y i takes the value 1, p i equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z i, where z i equals to z i equals to alpha plus beta x i. Okay, zeta x i. Now, from here, what you can do that this model apparently looks like a nonlinear model. Okay, this looks like a nonlinear model, but you can always linearize this model. How you can do that? If you take one minus if you take pi, pi by 1 minus pi, that would become e to the power z i, to the power z i. And then, if you take log of this, then log of pi by 1 minus pi equals to z i equals to alpha plus beta x i, alpha plus beta x i and then you can estimate this model because now this model becomes a nonlinear model, sorry a linear model. So, you can add the error term here and then that is basically the estimable function. So, this mathematical model you can convert into statistical one by adding the error term and this particular specification you can now estimate. So, you can estimate this model. Right? We can estimate this model, but even in this model also, what is your dependent variable? Dependent variable is 
log of p i by 1 minus p i and this p i by 1 minus p i it has a specific name. What is the name? The name is called odds ratio, odds ratio. Okay.